Aloha. I am so happy to have Phyllis with us here today on our discussions that we have about grief and happiness. And Phyllis, would you like to tell us a little bit about you? Sure. Uh, aloha, everyone. Um, my name is Phyllis Johnson. I'm originally from Northern California. I currently live in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I own my own accounting and consulting business, PKJ Consulting. And um, I have a 12 year old daughter. And in my free time, when I'm not working, I I'm a travel addict, um, so I go on a lot of cruises and anywhere where it's warm. Um, I also enjoy reading a good book, meditation, and relaxing when I can. Well, it sounds like a good life. Well, when your travels take you to Maui, be sure to look me up. I enjoy getting to meet people I've talked to. <laughs> I actually went to uh, Hawaii three times this past summer for the first time. Wow. I went one time. <laughs> yeah. It, I went one time, then I ended up literally going, I went June, July, and August, but uh, yeah, it was beautiful, beautiful, so um, didn't go to Maui, but yeah, oh, that was on the list. <laughs> gotta come to Maui. Maui's different than where you at, at um, Honolulu, like, or? Yes, yeah, yes, and I actually had a trip to Maui in August, and I think, oh, I think when I was going to go, it was raining out there, so I just ended up back on uh, Waikiki Beach, so yes. You know, that's, that was really rare. You got us like the week it was raining in the last yeah. quite a few months. So. Yes. <laughs> and actually when it's raining here, it's still, still gorgeous because it's beautiful, not yeah. that, that uh, cool. And it's, it's just, it's beautiful here all the time. I really love it here. It is. It is. So uh, tell us about uh, your experience with grief and happiness. Sure. So um, as I was sharing with you via email, so two, almost two years ago, March 2019, um, my mother, I was on the plane, about to get on a plane to go to the Bahamas um, for a friend's wedding. And I was informed that my mother was in the hospital with kidney failure. Um, and it was 20 minutes before I was getting on the plane. So it was one of those, you know, what do I do type situations. Um, she lived in Oakland, California, so, you know, wasn't a right next door situation, and um, I ended up still going, but, you know, came back, and we went up there, and so over the course of a year and a half, it was kidney failure, um, and then November of 2019, found out that she had ovarian cancer, um, and then I ended up flying up there for her surgery, the cancer had spread way more than they thought. And they didn't realize that until she was in surgery. Um, and so when she got out, she couldn't walk. She had to stay in the hospital and then COVID hit. Um, and then we found out that she, kept, so she was getting better. Everything was great. Um, she had a lot of very, 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 like a lot of friends come and visit her. Um, she was in a hospital in San Francisco and right across the bridge is Oakland, but it's, so it's not really that far, but it's still, if you've ever lived in the Bay area, um, and experienced the traffic, it, it's further than it seems in that 20 minutes. Um, most of her friends were older. And so when COVID hit all of a sudden, everyone stopped visiting her. Um, and so she never really understood COVID, um, because she was at home. Um, and so it was a whole year and a half of me still trying to run my business while going back and forth, trying to take care of her, making decisions at two o'clock in the morning of whether they should put a stint by her heart or, you know, not a doctor, um, you know, making all these life decisions, working from the hospital while talking to clients. And I'm a very private person. So um, she ended up getting an infection let's say like around June or July, and she just refused to go back to the hospital. And so she just decided that she didn't want to do chemo and dialysis. So she had to do, she was already on dialysis, which, and then she has to also do chemo. She said no. And so in August of 2020, she ended up passing away. Uh, I, I certainly can relate to that with having both of my husbands being on dialysis and all that entails yeah. before they died. Yeah. And my father was on dialysis too. So oh, wow. he had kidney issues. Yeah. So, um, you know, for me, um, my father passed when I was 20, um, 2021, like literally a week for my 21st birthday. And so my mother, I just turned 40 this April. So it's to have two parents and I'm only 40 are gone. And then also both my grandparents on both sides are gone. So to really have her at the last living, you know, 
older person in my family has been very life revealing. Um, and, you know, it's kind of a journey that I've been going on, but at the same time, you know, still had to run my business, still had to raise my daughter, still had to keep everything together during that process. How old's your daughter now? She's 12. 12. Oh, that's such a special age. Lots of, lots of changes going on. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And trying to, you know, she was at home during COVID. So, you know, making sure that we stayed on top of her school and education and all that fun stuff while, you know, going, literally going back. I mean, I was going back and forth to the Bay Area, trying to convince her to come down here and stay with me in Las Vegas. She didn't want, she refused. She just wanted to, you know, when you get older, you want to die where you want to, you know, you want to be where you want to be. So, um, but I was up there way more than anybody ever really knew. Cause I would just kind of hop on a plane and go and stay up there for as long as possible then come right back. So. so it wasn't that long ago that she, she passed. What, how do you feel now as far as, do you feel happy? Do you? So that's a great question. Um, and you know, what's interesting is, in so August 2021, of course, was her, you know, year anniversary. And so even all of, to that time, um, I also was going through a failing relationship during that time, you know, which ultimately failed, which is a blessing. And um, on the anniversary of her birth, of her passing, I, you know, um, started realizing what my, what is my life going to look like now? And you know, I kind of sat back and really became, you know, I'm a very um, strong person, <laughs> very tough. I don't complain. I don't cry. People very rarely see me emotional. And it just hit me like I, my whole life is going to be different now, you know, where holidays are different. Mother days are different. You know, all these holidays, every, my whole life is now different because choices that I make, I'm no longer having to you know, I used to, like for two years or even probably about five or six years because she had experienced mild arthritis and she had to learn how to walk. So it was a whole five year period of waiting for someone to pass away. And unless you went through that people, it's hard to explain to people, but you are always waiting for that phone call, you know? Um, and I think it just finally hit me in October, which is actually where I started to realize like, okay, I'm okay with her passing and not a joy, but just a peaceful understanding of a relief that I felt that somehow the journey's over. And, you know, when you're trying to explain that to people who don't understand it, it sounds like a little bit like, oh, you're happy. I'm like, not happy, but I'm okay with the journey being over. You know, I did everything possible to help her live as long as she humanly possibly wanted. But when she wanted to quit, I, you know, I remember. I never yelled at her during the process, but that was the only time when she just wouldn't, you know, she just didn't want to do it anymore. And I'm like, well, we could just do this. And if you just eat and you just do this. And she's just like, I don't want to. And, you know, um, so understanding that that journey is over and I can now do things without worrying about, am I going to get that phone call or, you know, should I be doing this instead of that? Or um, what about family members and how, you know, all these different things that you worry about while going through that journey, I'm realizing like, okay, my life is now going to be different. What do I want my next five, 10 years to look like? So, um, not so much of a happiness, but a relief, you know, honestly, I've gotten to the point where a relief that that journey is over. Cause last year has been, through, it's been a process, you know, um, for anyone who's had parents pass at a young age, you know, I went through sad, which, you know, I still get sad. I get, sad and then being around people who were older than me and both of their parents are alive and you kind of get like I don't want to hear about your you know <laughs> a little bit not anger so much but really like you know you're in your 50s and 60s and both your parents are alive lucky you you know and so I went through that mental thing of like okay well these are the cards I was dealt and let me find the positivity in those cards so I I like how you uh, express this positively about the the kind of relief, and it's it's okay to feel that relief. It's it's actually kind of wonderful when you recognize that relief, and it doesn't mean you're not grieving. It doesn't mean you don't miss them. It just means that um, it's okay. Everything's okay. Yes. How has this uh, affected your relationship with your daughter? It's made us stronger. Um, you know, because 
explaining, you know, she is very much introvert like myself. And so having to have those discussions with her as far as like, hey, you know, let's go see grandma and trying to make those decisions of, do I take her to the hospital? Is she gonna understand? You know, at some point my mom had like um, Thanksgiving, her last Thanksgiving, she was in the hospital and she had tubes down her throat. And it was, well, does she, does she wanna go? Does she not? And, you know, so I would just be, and my mom were there by myself and we were, you know, she was writing notes and we were making jokes about how she should learn Morse code, you know, just, you know, or sign <laughs> language. And, um, and so with my daughter, it's been a bonding experience. And it's also just recently sitting down with her and having a conversation of what do you want to do for Christmas? What do you want to do for Thanksgiving? Um, and, and being open to have those conversations about, you know, recently she shared that she was happy that I kind of had her come with me more than she may have wanted to because she didn't really understand. But she's like, now I have memories of grandma of when we used to drum together and we used to bake together and we used to you know, cook together. Um, about three months from my mom passed, I sent my daughter up there. She sat up there for almost a month, you know, because you don't get the, you know, once they're gone, that woulda, coulda, shoulda. So it was mm -hmm. like, you know, you're gonna go have fun. Yes, it's gonna be different because me, mom, I'm, up running around and you know grandma can't walk but also it taught her empathy you know it taught her more patience and to be empathy to understand that just because someone can't do the same thing as you there's always going to be things that you're going to learn that I can't teach you so it's brought us closer in conversation um and you know she's had to grow up a little bit unfortunately because of the situation you know because she doesn't have grandma grandpa you know and me trying to process but that looks like her other grandmother um, and grandfather there in Michigan. So it's not like they're close or anything like that either. Yeah, it's always uh, interesting when when you have kids because they're all, they're going to react differently. My my son and daughter were in high school when their grandparents died, and it was or actually their grandmother died half left her. They were in college. So they had a, a different perspective on life at that point. But I know it helped me to, to talk to him whenever I could about what was happening and uh, encourage them to express their feelings. Yes. And it, you, you brought up Thanksgiving and Christmas and with those things being right around the corner from us now, what do you think that you'll do differently to, uh, to brighten those celebrations? and keep them positive if you can. So part of my self journey, you know, my, I have a sister who's less than two years older than me. And uh, this process has, you know, we, I think we were very different. And so during the process, we came together. And last year, you know, after my mom passed me, her and our, she has one, she has two dollars. And then, you know, we all went and traveled together. Um, and then recently we just, stop talking and you know when I went to have a conversation with her we have two different views and what's interesting is you know is that when my mom by the time my mom was older we weren't she wasn't it wasn't a mother-daughter relationship it was a friends you know it was I'm talking to her every Sunday and we're having conversation it wasn't so much of her mothering me it's I was almost <laughs> almost the mother I didn't really need her for anything she was like a best friend to me um, whereas my sister was still living, you know, maybe two miles away from her and there was a need to steal. And so when my mother passed, we processed it differently. So I just, you know, realized like, okay, we're probably not going to be spending the holidays together like we used to, you know, and um, it's interesting that you asked me this question because, you know, it was making me sad because, you know, I have all these friends here who are like, yeah, come here for Thanksgiving and come here. And I'm like, you know, only loser without, you know, it's like, I'm the lonely loser without parents and, you know, Thanksgiving is family time, you know? And so I was like, eh. <laughs> no, but I'd rather just sit in the corner somewhere. I don't want to be the friend that comes over because I don't have parents, you know? And I went through that journey um, until I went to a friend's house two days ago who had invited me and I was, you know, expressing to her, I'm like, you know, thank you for inviting me, but Thanksgiving's family time. And then she said to me, she's like, no, I'm inviting everybody. I'm inviting, you know, you're not the only person, you know, I'm inviting this friend and, you know, this person, this person, and I'm turning the whole garage into this and Lexi, that's my daughter, you know, we're going to, Lexi's, um, we're going to put the video games in there and she just, 
I love her because she was expressing that she she understands, you know, and she's a really close friend of mine. So she knew what that was. And she's like, I'm inviting all friends, all family, because I really do want you and your daughter and everyone else who doesn't have the luxury of having parents or people who are out of town or people don't live close to each other anymore, you know, so all of this. So it was like, okay, this is, you know, we're going to do that for Thanksgiving. Um, and then my daughter said for Christmas, she wants to go ice skating. So we're going to do that. So I'm going to take every year as it comes and, you know, work on it and build as we can. That sounds great. I establishing new traditions and special yes. things with your daughter will be a great thing to do. I know uh, we moved here to Maui two years before Ron died. And so I didn't have any relatives here at that time. And I had made some really good friends in the short time I'd been here, but it, there weren't a lot of them. Most of them did have plenty of relatives here. So I was kind of in a quandary about what to do about Thanksgiving. So I decided that I would do, and I've, I've I didn't coin this term. I've heard it a lot in the last couple of years, but I would do Friendsgiving instead on a different day. So and, and until the pandemic on the Monday before Thanksgiving, everybody knew it was time to come to my house and have Friendsgiving. And it was it was so much fun. We have lots of musician friends and they bring a keyboard or just sing and do all these. They're really fabulous musicians. So <laughs> It was great to just be able to sit outside and have good music and and everybody brought something special to eat and we just celebrating being friends with each other and some of the people hadn't met some of the other people so they all kind of started getting new friends as well as uh, connecting with old friends and it was just so much fun I I really missed that the last couple of years so yes I'll yes. I, I don't know what's going to happen this time I haven't quite decided yet because we. It, you know, as soon as we got good, we got bad again here in Hawaii. So, yes, <laughs> not sure I'm quite ready to do that. But and that's what makes it hard because, you know, so my daughter, she goes between um, and her father. He's a really so she goes. We switch holidays. And with COVID, it's it's like you just don't know, because I mean, one Christmas, she and I went on a cruise together. She Christmas is her favorite holiday. So she has a Christmas tree in her bedroom year round. So, <laughs> so <laughs> You know, it's so it's like, yeah, you know what you're saying is accurate. It's like with COVID, it's, you know, it's kind of, it's different. It's like planning is like, okay, well, are these people going to feel like this way? Or do we, you know, it's not the same. So hopefully as time goes on, because it would make it a lot easier for planning, um, you know, because when I was in college, you get a Friendsgiving as well. And it was just fun. And I was like, you know, friends get together on holidays, you know, so um, people don't, you know, now travel is, prices are going increasingly higher again. So people probably aren't gonna travel as much. So I think Friendsgiving is a great idea. Yeah, I still have to decide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got a week or so. Yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe next year. Yeah, <laughs> it will be at least, at least we can still, I'm, I'm so grateful for things like Zoom for being yes. able to stay in contact with people that you wouldn't have other, otherwise like, for instance, my sister died a year ago this month, mm -hmm. and she yeah. was on the mainland. She didn't die of COVID, but she wasn't able to have a traditional funeral. I wasn't able to go over there because at, at the time that she died, the, there were heavy restrictions on, on movement. And her, her family was, uh, that, that were there were able to put on a really lovely service on Zoom. And so there was at least something, but yeah. it, it kind of, it's kind of not the same. We had that situation with my mom's passing with her funeral. Um, it was, it, everything that could go wrong went wrong, but you know, we still did it. So, um, you know, before she passed, I paid for the funeral arrangements. We, it was, a, you know, we, she had two weeks. And so on the day of the week, leading up to her funeral in the Bay Area, it was one of the worst fires of mm. like the, you know, and the, that's, I don't know if, you know, I'm sure if you think back, but the, the skies were orange. Oh yeah, Literally I remember that. Orange. Um, and it was, so the day of her, and, you know, and most of her friends were in her seventies, eighties, you know? <laughs> and so the day of her funeral, it's, you know, she had, she was in the drumming circle. 
the air quality was too bad for them to drum. And then, you know, the pastor, he, he got, he was sick. So he didn't know if he was going to show up, but it, it was just, in, you know, it was one of those things where at the time it was, you know, I'm trying to be understanding, you know, but at the same time, I'm also like, you guys have been, some of you have been friends with my mom before, even before I was even thought about. So it was like trying to not be angry, but also being angry, you know, I'm like, just put on a face mask and go, you know, I, you know, but you can't be selfish, but still, you know, and so trying to deal with that process, um, you know, and he's, people did show up and people that, it was a beautiful funeral just because people share things that I had no clue about. They talked about the school that my mom had opened, which I had never knew about. One of my, uh, yeah, she opened up a whole, the whole entire school that's still open to this day. Um, and so the kids there drew like, you know, these little things that she opened it with um, my dad. So they did it together. And I'm like, so it was beautiful listening to those stories. Um, I had a friend that I've known since seventh grade. She talked about how much my mom inspired her. It's so it was beautiful. And we also were able to do it on Zoom. So for those who couldn't attend, you know, um, they did. And then one of her friends ended up having like something at her house later on. And so I had to make peace with, you know, people not coming because it was like, oh, you've known her forever, you know, but you, if it's a fire and the air quality is bad and there's COVID, it's like, what, what you, you know, what can you do, you know? So definitely understand the Zoom funeral situation. Yeah. I, I've learned one thing with, with uh, talking all of the people that I've talked to that it's really kind of a good idea if you get an opportunity to if, if you're the one who's who's uh, having health challenges to make your own arrangements ahead of time and take that burden off your family and have things be the way you want them to be. So my mom was a butterfly. I call her my butterfly because, you know, whereas me, I am, I'm an accountant by trade. So I'm numbers, detail, planning, you know, my daughter graduates in six years. I'm already like, okay, what am I going to do? I'm moving to Jamaica. I'm like that type of person. My mom, she would talk on the phone with you for six hours straight. The second I would mention, hey, you know, um, sign power of attorney for me. She, she would, oh, I can't do this anymore. I can't, my, my throat, I can't talk. And she would talk, like she would hang up. I don't, she, I don't think she ever made peace, which is one I wish she would have. I don't think she made peace with her passing. So I could talk to her about everything and it was like, you know, hey, I need this information to make my life easier. What colors do you want? You know, and we talked about when she passed, she wanted a party. And that was what broke our hearts. We can party during that time. She wanted a party. I knew she wanted to be cremated. But everything else, you know, when she got to the point where she couldn't talk, I had to like break into her bank account to figure out well, what's the funds and what's this. I changed the address, which even to this day, um, change the uh, address so that all her bills and everything was coming here. And I still get stuff to this day. And sometimes I'm looking at things and I'm like, you know, like in a uh, uh, energy bill. And it's like, she's not even living anymore. So whoever's living in that house and I get irritated and I, right. You know, and it's like, I had someone come bang on my door probably a couple months ago. And the lady was asking for my mom and I'm like, I was taking a nap, so I was, you know, extremely tired. And I'm like, well, she's she's dead. And the lady just was like, oh, you're lying to me. And da, da, da. And I'm like, who? So I grabbed my mom's urn and I'm like, all right, we'll put the document on, on here. And the lady like looked and I'm like, you know, and I get she was just doing her job. And I'm but I and I'm sure people do lie, but I don't know if they lie about that. Um, and so you still have this lingering even after it's done. So I my mom, she just she never, she never yeah she just wouldn't <laughs> so we had to figure it out afterwards but yeah well, I, I think things like that can be a lesson to the rest of us that uh that's not helpful <laughs> when things like that happen my it was interesting with with my mom and dad because my my dad died suddenly he'd had health challenges on and off but nobody was expecting him to just die yeah and so mom was kind of taken aback with all that she had to do and all that she didn't know and she, she managed it pretty well, but one of the first things she did was go to, when, when she made the arrangements for him, she also made arrangements for her at, at the same place. 
and right. paid the, the insurance that you can do in advance and had all that taken care of. And these people knew my mom because they, they were uh, in businesses that did business together and, and they'd known them for years. So it's not like mom was a, a stranger to them. And then uh, mom ended up getting a, a brain tumor and an operable brain tumor so that she sometimes she was perfectly lucid and other times she was someplace else and it was it was very interesting to watch what she was going through and I, I really was taking care of her for the last couple of years of her life not realizing and not even thinking about taking care of bills taking care of other things and when when i started dawning on me all these things i started uh while well, she was still there but she she really couldn't answer questions but i i was able to work most of those things out and then when it came time for her funeral and my sister and i went down and made arrange, arrangements they said well you don't have to worry about anything because she she wants all of this that she had written down uh she already paid for it with her insurance and i said great and a couple months later, I got a letter and a check from the funeral home because in their researching, they discovered that she had done the same thing twice. The second time, apparently, when she was not quite yeah. altogether there and they knew her, her name was on the files. They should have known better, yeah. but they accepted the yeah. money. They didn't have to tell me because I never would have known. Would have known, but... but I, I thought, gee, that's just, you know, you think you're doing business with people that are really ethical. And I guess they were ethical ultimately because they refunded oh, yeah. it, but they shouldn't have taken it in the first place. True. And they but should also have discovered that a long time before. Yeah. 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 But it was a welcoming gift, you know, yes. I mean, you yeah. know, no matter what the thought, you know, it's like she, no matter what her mindset was, she was going to help you in the end. So that's a good thing. Yeah, there's there's so many things to do and and not to do. It makes me think, gee, I should I should uh, write a book. What not to do <laughs> yeah. when getting ready for um, a, a transition? Um, yes. Oh, but also, you know, there's there's things about what do to do. But really, people, it's it's like with the work that I do with uh, my podcast, the the book that I've written, the blog that I have, all all the the. Uh, grief and happiness alliance that that I have that meets every week on zoom for people to get together and write and learn happiness um, practices it's it's really cool and I'm doing all this stuff and I I have such a challenge with a lot of people with even talking about what I'm doing because they just go to the next subject as fast as they can they don't want to deal with it they don't want to talk about it and then uh, they'll get in a situation and say why didn't anybody ever tell me that I needed to have the durable power of attorney for health care. You know, they don't yeah. even know what that is. And everybody yeah. needs everybody listening today. If you don't have one yet, get it now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got lucky because I think for me, I was going up there so much that the doctors got to know me. They knew who to call, you know, even though I was in Vegas. They, so I, you know, and then when she couldn't talk anymore, she finally was writing down passwords and stuff, you know, so oh, that's good. It was when she, her back was against the wall and she couldn't tell me no, <laughs> that it was like, here's the information, but, um, you know, it, it helps to plan for these things. I also can understand why a person wouldn't, um, because I'm admin by nature. It was like, okay, you know, kind of like, type checklist thing but if you're not that type of person it will overwhelm you mentally emotionally you know emotionally and, and it did because you're you know looking in, in also trying to deal with that person and which is why you know I ended up changing the address because she would get the medical bills and she would break down because you know oh it's costing me them a million dollars to keep me alive and I'm like yeah you've been paying health insurance all your life this is good let's you know, you know yeah. <laughs> it was like let's not focus on those things you know um so it's a, it's a process. And, you know, fortunately I was the person to do that process. I mean, in essence, you want to go before, you know, your parents should go before you. So I'm lucky to be able to have gone to that process, but it definitely taught me, it taught me empathy. It taught me to be sympathetic. It taught me when someone's sharing what they have going on. It's like, you know, it's like, I know I've been there so I can understand 
you know, why your mind is fuzzy right now because you're thinking about this, this, you know, I look back and I'm like, you know, my business flourished during that time, which is great, you know, because I'm an accountant and I do taxes and I do accounting and bookkeeping. So, you know, COVID happened and all of these businesses needed me. Um, and so I didn't say no, because my mom's sick. It was yes, because my mom's sick and I need to pay these medical bills or I need to buy this bed that's, you know, two, three thousand dollars and I need to buy these plane tickets and I need to buy this. So I just said yes to everything. And um, I never said, you know, maybe two of my clients that I ever really told, you know, like, hey, I'm at the hospital. I just can't do this one thing right now. And, you know, one of them, she does spiritual courses, healing and things of that nature. And she was just really gracious, you know, um, other one, not so empathetic and, you know, which totally understand you sneak at your stuff, but what was interesting, um, I ended up deciding to, you know, no longer work with her. And it was just years of, you know, that, that was kind of like a last straw for my, for me. And I remember two months later, she emailed me because her mother-in-law had passed away and she said, I understand. And, you know, so it was nice to, you know, for her to even decide to do that, you know, but because you, people don't, don't know the process until they go through the process and you really, it's hard to explain unless you've done it and everyone's going to do it differently. And that's what I've learned. I learned everyone's going to do it differently. Um, and I'm, you know, lucky one to still be able to do it and maintain some of those. That's right. <laughs> so. Wow. Well, you've given uh, all of us a, a lot to think about, and I, I hope people will take seriously the idea of, of pre-planning what you want and helping out your loved ones by letting somebody know where those passwords are and the other things that are really essential, but which insurance policies you have uh, and have that durable power of attorney for healthcare and, and a regular durable power of attorney too. I know the one for durable power of attorney for healthcare, you can get for free online and just have it notarized or witnessed by two people. And then it's absolutely legally valid. And that way your wishes can be carried out. And there's no question about it. And that's, that's really, really important. And you might not want to think about it, but I can tell you, you'll feel better about having it done and not, hang, not having to think about it until the, the need arises. True. Sure. So thank you very much for joining us today. I, I really enjoyed talking with you. And we'll uh, be back again next week with another podcast from Grief and Happiness. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, grateful to have you here. <laughs>